this video I kind of wanted to do something different to what I had been doing because I felt like I was projecting a teaching onto people too much rather than kind of sharing and offering like experience because I think when when I was having a lot of trouble and I looked to YouTube to kind of help me with my problems because I didn't have many people to talk to although there was a lot of good information and helpful information out there I felt like I needed someone to kind of connect to or someone to kind of relate to on like a deeper level so I thought I'd talk about something that's been like a struggle for me and it's probably like one of my biggest regrets and I haven't really talked about it much before so I'll kind of see how it goes but um, I'll just give you a bit of a backstory. So, I'm kind of more of an anxious and sensitive person, and I've kind of always had this trouble with lower self esteem and dealing with not feeling good enough and feeling like I have to do so much to be worthy of anything. Um, and it kind of sounds like a sad thing, but I'm not trying to make it seem like that because it's something that's actually kind of has some upsides, you know, um, you know, because I'm more sensitive, more able to feel things, I'm more compassionate towards other people, and um, as well as that, me not feeling worthy kind of drives me to work harder and to do more things, and it's just trying to get a healthy balance with that. But as I kind of wanted to say, one of my biggest regrets is probably with a girl that I really liked and <laughs> it's it kind of started when I was first getting into high school and going into high school I wasn't really expecting much you know it's kind of like oh yeah high school it's kind of like primary school I'll just kind of get through it maybe I'll have a girlfriend maybe I won't maybe I'll just go on and then I'll find a job and then you know my life will kind of work out but there'd always been kind of like this awe, like, well, these people, they catch the bus to go to high school and they they wear these cool these cool uniforms and, like, they get to wear a tie and those sorts of things. And then when you have to wear it, you're like, oh, my God, this sucks so much. But I wasn't really expecting that much going into it. And I I've grew up in a very small town and hadn't been exposed to a lot of people. And there was more people in my year level than there was in my entire group primary school so I don't remember it being too much of an hard adjustment because I felt like I still had some of the natural confidence that I did in primary school but I felt like that slowly whittled away as kind of like the hormones kicked in and anything but I kind of diverging from the main story but I m met this girl she was in my class which weirdly I had being put allocated into this class with a friend from primary school but we both decided we kind of hated that class and like it was like a bunch of like you know jocks just mucking around in class and we didn't really want that and so you know I changed class into this class and I kind of spent I was kind of comfortable with myself you know I'd go and do things by myself I'd like work by myself and those sorts of things but we had Early in the year, we had a kind of pool carnival, and I remember, I remember, well, what my memory of her for the first time was her being surrounded by a couple other people, kind of, it felt like her, she was the centerpiece of attention, but that might just be, be me, like, kind of constructing it, and I don't know how, but some one of them got, one of them was from my primary school, so I kind of got into talking to them. And then we walked back to the school from the pool because it was like a couple blocks down. And I remember talking to her along the way and it felt so easy and natural and it felt really warm, warming and comforting. And I guess that was kind of a foreign experience to me. You know, like I liked a couple of people before in primary school, but it's kind of like little crushes and you don't really like do much about them. It's kind of like, yeah, but this was probably like my first like big crush and it lasted like ages. Um, 
And I think, anyway, so after that kind of happened, the the carnival, I think, was that, that, that week, and I kind of was sitting by myself, and she came and actually sat with me, and we ended up talking for, like, a lot of the day, and I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but whatever, I felt natural and, like, like I could be myself around her, and that was, like, one of the first times I think I felt I could, and it's probably one of the few people that I felt like I've truly connected with. And <laughs> later on, like several years later, so this was when I was in grade seven and I'm in Australia. And when I was in grade 11, I remember she told me like, oh, I kind of felt bad for you that you were sitting all by yourself. So that's why I decided to talk to you. <laughs> anyway, so we talked a lot and my friends saw that we were kind of getting along well. So they kind of took me aside and said, oh, you know, maybe you should ask her out. And then I went back and I was like, mm, I'm not sure. And she had just told me that she liked another guy. And so I didn't really want to get in the way of that. And she kept pressing me about what they were talking about. And then I'm like, oh, okay. You know, um, <laughs> I was blushing really nervous and I didn't mean to ask her out for this, but I said, they asked me to ask you out. And, and she said, I think she said something like, oh, that's really cute or something like that. And then, and then she asked if I did want to go out with her and I was like, oh, no, it's okay. And then she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, no. And then we kind of sat down in silence as, as it, the carnival was kind of ending. And then she asked again and I said, oh, no, that's okay. Because I kind of didn't want to get, I didn't communicate this all across well enough. You know, I didn't tell her that I didn't, want to be in a relationship with her if she likes someone else. I didn't want to get in the way of that. I guess that's my sensitive, compassionate side getting out, coming out, but it's like in a negative kind of way because I didn't assert myself or communicate effectively with her and kind of say what I was thinking and feeling. But um, <laughs> we didn't really talk much after that. Well, for a while until, you know, there was a musical that year in grade seven and we were both doing it and then we ended up talking a lot more, becoming close friends and then, I don't know, I guess I just got really anxious because I think she was dating, she ended up dating a couple other guys from my class and that kind of got into me because I had liked her but she wouldn't, she hadn't been talking to me that much and then we started talking more because of the musical and we were doing that together and it was really nice, but then, I don't know, I just kind of shut myself off at one part and completely pushed her away towards the end, you know? It was like, I didn't want to deal with the rejection and I was kind of scared of what I was feeling and kind of communicating that and I couldn't get that across to her. So I kind of created just this wall to kind of protect myself, which is, you know, it's a sad thing and it's kind of something that's been built up for so long that I'm still struggling to kind of break it down now, even with like friends, but it's like an ongoing process. And so we didn't talk and I think I ended up calling her a bitch or something in class. And, you know, I think I, yeah, I just had a really, I was having a really kind of tough, like, tumultuous time and you know and then the next year we didn't speak at all and I was actually deciding whether I wanted to get homeschooled or not and I really wanted to but then our class list came out and I saw that she was going to be in the same class with me for in the next year and I was like I've got to stay at school even if it's just for a semester I've got to go back and stay because I know that if we're in the same class we're going to end up talking again <laughs> so that's kind of why I stayed at school, which is, I'm not sure if I regret it, but it would have been nice to have been homeschooled and kind of figure out my own way kind of through that, you know, because I didn't really like school. I never really did much homework. I didn't really care for it that much. You know, there was nothing in it for me and I'm someone who's like quite curious and questions things. And I like to do 
what I want to do, you know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that ended up actually happening. We, you know, we started talking a lot more and we became, you know, pretty close friends through that. Best friends, actually, you know, throughout that. And that kind of continued on, but there was always kind of this push and pull, I think, because I had created this wall, you know, like I couldn't let her in because whenever I felt bad, I couldn't let her in because part of me feeling bad was my feelings and attachment to her. And I didn't want to tell her that because I was scared of losing her, but I was scared of opening myself up and being that vulnerable. So <laughs> I kind of just carried on for a couple of years, you know, we were in the same class again the next year. And then we had, um, we only had one class in my second last year at school in year 11 and I think that's where things kind of started to unravel you know we got along well but she you know she'd date guys throughout that some of them were my friends others were like people from school that I knew and that that really hurt me but she often would give me kind of a hint or a chance if I'm honest you know she'd be like I remember one day she sent me a Snapchat and she kind of recorded herself and she said, oh, do you like someone? And I said, um, I got really anxious when I saw that because I was like, I feel like she's having a dig at me and she's trying to tell me that, but I'm not sure if I want to tell her. And then I said, no, why? Because I kind of wanted her to kind of hint more towards us kind of liking each other and she said I don't know maybe maybe you should like someone and that that's all that kind of happened and I don't know I think there was another kind of instance where she kind of hinted at that before in a class you know and you know just little things you know like you know we'd always get along really well and you know we'd laugh and kind of joke together but then when things kind of got tough, I'd just create this wall. And that sometimes it felt like she was kind of a more popular person than, than I was, and I wasn't really that secure in myself. So, you know, I kind of felt like there was this drift. And I think one time when we started to really fall apart in year 11 was when I kind of, through text, I kind of was angry at her and I said, I don't like how you call me your best friend if you're not treating me that way, you know. Like, we didn't catch up much outside of school. And that kind of annoyed me, but I felt like that was also kind of my fault now in reflection because I didn't make, I didn't make any plans to see her, you know. I was like, oh, do you want to catch up? I didn't say, oh, do you want to catch up often at this time, you know. Like, oh, it'd be nice if we saw each other more outside of school. I didn't say that or do that, even though I wanted to. You know, I wanted her to kind of do that because I didn't feel confident in myself. Um, and then eventually I just ended up just kind of cutting her off, really. You know, we still kind of saw each other in our last year of school, but I think she just got sick and tired, which was fair enough, of me just blocking her off and not letting her in and not, you know, communicating to her properly. And, you know, she just wanted to move on for that, which I completely understand and respect, but it's like crazy how it like still kind of affects me now. And I feel like embarrassed by that, you know, like, it's like a embarrassing and thing. It's something that kind of still kind of haunts me because it's like a regret that I have and you know you don't want to keep making a mistake like that especially since you know there's kind of signs that there could have been a good relationship out of that but I it was my fault that it didn't happen you know I could have done it I could have been so much more happier or I could have been at peace with myself if I had have resolved that conflict or taken a step and just told her that I liked her or told her that I'd like to see her more or whatever, you know. Um, but again,
guess that's kind of like a part of life, you know, you have these things that you regret and that you kind of have to learn and try and move on from. But I think I just kind of wanted to share that because I didn't really have anyone, I didn't feel like I had anyone to share that with. And I hope that it kind of can help someone else or that, you know, you might relate to this story in some way and you might think, oh, well, I don't want to think about this, you know, several years into the future and then regret it, you know. And I'm still kind of figuring out how to kind of deal with it. You know, I'd like to say that it's completely gone, you know, and that I have, I have a partner, you know, I've told people that I've liked them, but it's still kind of a process that I'm trying to go through. And I think the first part of that is me kind of talking about it like I am now and naming the fear and kind of understanding it. But then I've also got to take steps towards, you know, preventing it. So in the future, I don't keep making the same mistake and perpetuating it, you know, perpetuating the cycle. Also, someone that I do know or that knows of this is watching this, I kind of apologise for not talking to you about it and that it's come through on this way and that you've kind of found it through here. I apologise for that. You know, I may, I probably should have talked in person with you about it, but this is kind of the way that I've chosen to deal with it now and that I'm trying to move forward with it. So yeah, thank you for listening if you did, and that was kind of something that was a bit harder, a video, video that was a bit harder for me to do, but it's probably a bit longer as well, but I hope it um, is beneficial to someone.